Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wizard Kitty and me, we welcome you to another live stream where we will continue a fun little animation here uh, that we started last time on this live stream. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have some fun with some effect animation, I hope, if we get to that part. But most importantly, next I wanted to do a little cleanup of um, the kitty here. Because uh, we started being very scribbly on bitmap layers and uh, first I want to tie down our cute little cat here to really see how the animation works with cleaner lines. Um, yeah. Hey, Projporp. Nice to see you. Welcome to the stream. Uh, and I would say we jump right in by creating a vector layer. I finally want to go back to vector. Um, I, I I know what I did wrong last time. I try I started changing like the DPI settings of the bitmap, and that that's why it got all wonky and messy and weird. But um, yeah, I'm 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 glad to be back on a bitmap layer here, a uh, vector layer here. So let's find a good brush setting. I think we can go a little bit lower here. I want to train myself to work with thinner lines. I feel like in a lot of my previous work, I, I, I was always working with those thick vector, typically vector lines. Uh, oh wait, no, I want this to be a little thick. Hmm. I set it to two. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. Um, hello, Ainan Hasim. I am doing great. How are you doing? Nice to see you on this wonderful evening for me. Whatever it is in your part of the world, I'm glad you are spending it here. Um, yeah, people, just let me know if there are any troubles with the uh, music, if it's too loud, too quiet, or anything like that. I have the mic nice and close to me, that should work fine. Um, so, this uh, scribble was relatively, was relatively clean here. I like the looseness in the in the eye how I did it in the in the scribble failing to replicate it but fortunately you know you can always um, cheat a little bit with the smoothness setting here up here in open tunes we should be able to replicate it a little better Scott, nice to see you. How are you doing? I haven't heard from Scott in quite a while. You're still welcome anytime to stream if you want. If you want to show the people some 3D stuff here on the channel. Because, you know, usually we're very 2D here. Ainan says this is nighttime in my country. Yeah! <laughs> I know those nights where you spent them on YouTube <laughs> instead of sleeping. I feel like, like sometimes I really hate going to bed because I feel it feels like I have to put everything on hold that I'm I'm doing and there's still so much to do. So much fun stuff. I like to have this eye a little bit, a little bit more open. I love me some asymmetry. Although we probably should move that eyelid down a little bit. Yeah, I think I like it that way.
Oh, Scott, you reply to me in Skype. Ooh, I gotta check Skype again. I wonder if this is still opening on my PC. <laughs> I haven't seen Skype in a while. Hmm. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, everything used to be Skype. And I feel like, I don't know, since the pandemic, everything is happening in, like, Zoom and at my workplace. Teams and Slack have replaced everything. I feel like weirdly Skype lost a little bit of foothold. Which is, which is kind of strange because, you know, you, you would think that like in those times where everybody needs vo uh, video messaging that Skype should be doing really good. But yeah, I'll, 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 I'll see. I'll check what my Skype is doing. Mm -hmm. All right, we might want to ch um, tweak this a little bit with the uh, earth point editor tool. Get rid of some points here. Okay. Oh. I want to stay selected, I think. Ah, there we go. Some smoothness into this pity shape here. Hello, Dr. Pawan. Nice to see you. Scott would like to do more live streaming if the people want to see it. Yeah, people, what do you think? Do you want to have more 3D live streams? I don't think there are that many people online in the stream yet, so that we can't, um, can't really ask chat like a representative poll. But I would love to have more 3D content on uh, Animator Island. I would also like to get more into. 3D myself. I like this little dent up here. Tiniest little dent undermining his authority. Maybe this kid, uh, this kitty, I don't really think that he's like a Wizard, wizard. I think he's still in training. Like, you know, the wizard's apprentice, like Mickey Mouse. I wanna be wizard. So, yeah. I've been doing quite well in the last couple of days. And this is actually part of, you know, I want to try to do more live streaming, but I also want to try to do more like of my own animation because I realized I had, I think I already said that a couple times in stream, I really didn't um, draw just for fun anymore or animate it just for fun anymore. And I feel like that's so sad. Like, you know, you get into art and animation because you have fun doing it, but depending on how life goes, you know, there's a lot of work that you have to do, which, you know, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm happy that I have work, but yeah, so doing something little fun like this, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, do, to, to, to doing that more and hopefully live stream more regularly so you can actually expect stuff happening on this channel. Scott is asking me, how was the move? Yeah, I moved, well, you, you almost can't say recently <laughs> because it's already been quite a while. Um, I think we moved like in November already. And uh, yeah, no, it, 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 
it was something that we really looked forward to. Um, and uh, it was a lot of work because we have this nice little house here now that needed quite a lot of renovation. Um, but I actually sometimes really enjoyed doing something different, you know, so doing something not at the at the at the PC. Um, so that somehow was a nice change. I mean, there were moments where it was a bit too much because you know, on top of all the usual work stuff, now we have to take care of a house. <laughs> that can be can be quite annoying. But yeah, we have most of the stuff unpacked now. The books are in their shelves now, which that, that makes me happy. I like from moving, I think my favorite um, my favorite part of moving is when you put stuff in shelves and you can organize it and have a new system and everything is where you would like it to be. I really like that aspect of moving. Um, yeah, Danger Do, it is allowed to ask for tips and tricks here, of course, anytime. Hello Chanel, nice to see you. So, yeah. And I don't know, sometimes random things make me really happy. We have uh, we have a little, we have a weird little entrance area, like there's a staircase. Our house is very narrow, um, but two stories. And um, the room where the staircase is in is just a room where the staircase is in. And um, it's kind of like a little bit wasted space because, you know, you, you can't put a desk in there, you can't put a table in there. Um, it, it can't be like a functional room, it, like it can't be a living room, it can't be like... <laughs> it's nothing. Uh, we have our workout stuff there now, so that, you know, in the morning you can, you can grab like a yoga mat and do a little bit of sport, which is the thing that I should really do more of. Um, we now have a, a big mirror in there, which is really cool. So, you know, when you go out somewhere, I mean, whenever that happens in these times, but you, you we have like a really nice mirror where you can check your clothes and it makes the room look so much bigger. Like I, I had never, like, I mean, I heard about that. Like it's like a trick for small spaces. If you live like in a small house, you should have lots of mirrors um, because it makes, makes the place look bigger. It makes it appear as if there's almost like a window or something. Um, and I really underestimated that effect. Um, and it's not not that big. I mean, 70 by 70 centimeters, something like that. Um, let me see if I can bring up a chat question, actually, at the... Um, on the screen when I'm starting to answer chat questions here. Search on YouTube. Uh. Where is that? It's just a couple clicks. I'll be back to talking about interesting stuff in just a couple clicks. Trying to get the technology to do what I want it to do. Ah, okay. Here we go. Danger Do says, I'm looking into this animating stuff. And I was wondering if you could recommend an easy for beginners program. Well, of course, <laughs> I can. For example, recommend our own program that you can find uh, on animatorisland.com slash 2D. It's a class for 2D animation, um, but it, the technologies and the principles that I talk about are, of course, um, 
uh, true for any form of animation in any software. Um, a lot of uh, software tutorials in this um, in this class are about open tunes, but um, it's also a lot about like the workflow and what step to do at what point during your animation, and that really applies to any software and even 3D animation. Like if you're interested in 3D animation, uh, a lot of the workflow, um, like the planning stages and the mindset and how to think about your character and what the character's doing and how to think about time and space and spacings and um, those are very similar. So I think you might be able to start with this, uh, with our 2D course pretty well, even if long term you want to do another form of animation. Um, hello, Samantha. Hello, Alex. Hello, Hilly. So yeah, uh, that's our own animation class. Everybody who's interested in it, in it go check it out. Um, like the, the videos we added recently are like one of the most recent uploads to this channel are about an animation workflow, how professional animators are working by creating the poses first and then worry about timing and all that stuff later. Um, so that that's probably one of the most important videos. Like the videos that are coming now, even to the ones that I didn't publish yet that I'm still working on, I'm really looking forward to because that really is the meat of, of a good animation workflow. Yeah, sometimes you just need to commit to a line here. That's good. That's a line we can work with. Now let's cut it off. I wonder what the best tool in Open Tunes is to, to like get rid of these like truding lines. Some vector software have some really good tools where you can just cross out protruding lines. I mean, this this worked okay. This worked quite well. Danger Dew says, I might look into that. Is it possible to get guidance if I have questions or something? Uh, in general, if you have any questions and I happen to be live streaming, just come here ask your questions. Um, I'm also thinking about a way how we could maybe sometimes occasionally look at people's work and, you know, give some, some free critiques. But if you're really looking for something in depth, some in depth guidance and some in, in depth animation critique, it's actually when one of my tiers on Patreon, um, we have a group mentoring session every month and you can check out more about this on animatorisland.com slash group mentoring, um, where if you become a patron in the group mentoring tier, you can join this monthly session, bring whatever you're currently working on. And you know, that can be anything that can be an animation. It can just be an artwork. It can be a character design, a story idea, and um, you can present it and I will give you feedback, annotate it, draw over it, uh, help you improve it and there are also other wonderful people in that mentoring session other, other students um, to give you feedback as well and ideas and stuff because you know sometimes it's really good to get different perspective on your work um, and I think that it's a good thing to have a mix from like there always will be one experienced mentor like me or uh, hopefully JK is gonna join in giving mentoring tips um, but also like people that are more like on, on your level starting out uh, to share what they are struggling with and what they uh, how they could overcome that. Um, yeah, so you get feedback on your work, but I could also give you like exercises or a plan on how to approach the next steps. 
Um, so yeah, that's e group mentoring, and it's available as a Patreon tier. So check out Patreon.com/slash/MetalIsland. And of course, there are always these live streams where we can talk about things. Samantha asks, I would like to know how can I better my timing and animation? What can you recommend? Um, I hope we're gonna get into that tonight. I hope we're gonna actually get far enough to start timing. Um, so I can I can show you how I would approach timing. And I'm actually just now writing on a video about timing. The next one in the 2D animation class, the next video that I'm writing on currently um, that will be available for free on YouTube. Coming out soon, hopefully, maybe in two weeks, uh, will explain my approach to timing, um, an approach that I actually learned from other animators who uh, worked at Disney. And uh, it's, it's one of the best approaches that, that I know. Um, you know, part of it is that what we're doing right now, that you do your key poses first, and you worry about the key poses later. Uh, you worry about the timing later. You may, you design great key poses first, uh, extremes and breakdowns, so that you can fully focus on the timing. Um, and yeah, I hope we will get to the timing part and, and we can do it live here. But in case we don't, there's also gonna be a video soon. So, Now, I feel like some lines, I'm getting like a really good flow tonight and some lines are just horribly wobbly. Alright, I think that's it. And then a lot of special effect stuff is happening, so we're just holding that pose. And this is just a modification of that pose, but I think it would be good to redraw everything because I like it if the line, when the line lifts, um, when there's just some wobbling happening. Maybe I should zoom in a bit. So, yeah, uh, chat if you have any questions, or you know, we could also talk about like animated films or something like that. Oh, yeah, maybe we should do that. Um, I finally saw Encanto. Um, I was kind of looking forward to it because the trailer I felt like was really really fun and vibrant and bright and really got me curious about that house like I, I was so excited to see like I don't know so somehow living in animate objects like in Beauty and the Beast I always loved um, so I'm glad that we we got something along that line with the house in Encanto that's that's pretty cool and um, I enjoyed the film okay <laughs> I somehow, I don't know, there's, there's some edges, like, the animation as always, so wonderful, um, the acting on a micro level, there's so many interesting expressions and so many, like, on a scene level, I really love this film, um, and like, also in a sense that I, I feel like I, I would have loved to know some characters even deeper. And we got to know them in the video, uh, in the in the film. I think Encanto would actually be a great series. Because it, it turns into being about the individual problems of the, the siblings. Um, like the main character goes in and fixes uh, or connects with that one character with her sister that is struggling with all the pressure um, and then she, she, in the end she's even connecting with her least favorite sibling um, 
which I don't know. I I, I kind of like this premise of I'm I'm going in and fix my relationship with my siblings. Like I feel like that's a very f interesting interesting premise, and that is something that a lot of people can relate with. You know, because family sometimes goes on your nerves. But if you think about it, she really only fixed like the relationship of two or three people. Like she didn't went to every single one and she didn't connect with every single one. Um, that's why I thought it would be cool to see this as a series. And you know, and then one episode, one entire episode could be about the relationship of one of the siblings. And and then there are some things like, you know, whenever this there's like magic powers involved, I sometimes go into like a rule lawyer mode and I'm like, wait a second, if she has perfect hearing and she hears her sister's eyelid twitch, uh, like, why didn't she hear the grandmother mumbling about how she is really worried and how she thinks that the magic is fading? And stuff like that, like, like, you know, there was some stuff that was whispered that she supposedly didn't hear. How does that work? Um, and you know, I I already saw that some people try to come up with explanations that her 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 room maybe is soundproof, which does make sense because I think it would get quite annoying, right? If you could always hear everything. Um, you would probably want a soundproof room, but then she still heard other things at night. So I don't know. I don't know if that's believable. But you know, that's the problem. If you have like even just one magic power, it's it, it can be difficult to keep everything believable. Um. Oh, thank you, Barry. Barry says, I really appreciate your online tutorials for animation, a great resource. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind words, Barry. If you have any questions, any topics that you would like me to talk more about, uh, please let me know. Billy says, I probably need to see it again, Encanto. Uh, I got the sense that most characters knew more than they let on. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there was some stuff hidden in there. I hope so. Um, like, I don't know. Ever, ever since... Uh, what was his name? Hans in Frozen. I'm so, like... Ah, like, I don't know. I feel like Disney is thinking nowadays that you don't need to prepare twists. Or hide... I don't know, like little secrets, little little character moments that tell you stuff. Like, I don't know. In Frozen, they definitely got lazy with that. Um, so I hope they did it in Encanto. But I mean, it would make sense that some characters knew more. And I mean, they have to be a little bit dangerous. Um, they have to be a little bit careful because that grandma is really not taking well to critique. Um, so I don't know. I feel like the, the movie didn't really explore some things. And like I also didn't like how that that exposition song. Like I mean it looked beautiful, animation great. Uh, colors great, rendering great, uh, light models, everything, you know, high quality Disney, without a doubt. I just feel like, is it really necessary to just list, like, oh, this sibling th does this, and this sibling does that, and... I don't know, wouldn't it be more cool to just see their everyday life, and maybe even, like, interacting with the main character? in a way that indicates that they need help and stuff, like, beyond just a list. I mean, I guess that was what they were trying to do. They, they were... I don't know. It didn't feel like an everyday scene, though. It felt more like, um... 
the the kids are asking her and and she's just answering hi even nice to see you oh you got online class have fun with that Yeah, Healy says, in a way, in Encanto, they were all exposition songs. Yeah, a lot of them were. My favorite movie, uh, my favorite music, my favorite song was the surface pressure one of the... Um, because, you know, there something actually happened in the song. And the sister revealed that she was under pressure, that she was feeling like that. And... And her wish was to relax and stuff like there was a little more a little more than just hey i'm strong uh hey this girl can make flowers and hey this person can shapeshift and, you know there was more about what it means to have that power i love that stuff you know that a superpower can be a curse like now we're talking that is a story <laughs> and i was so happy when that song came on Ciao, Ivan. <laughs> Ivan, I like to see timing charts on everything in real life. Yeah, that would be cool if you could just, you know, get your 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 study annotations right next to real life. Both sisters had that. They just showed it in different ways. Well, you know, the other sister, the the. Uh, beautiful arrogant one also like I also love that that's what I'm saying like I loved those moments I would have seen I would have loved to see moments for every single one every single superpower that's why I think that would be great for a series you know one episode one sibling and then you can really take the time to take them through um, you know reconnecting uh, or, you know, first showing conflict, then reconnecting, then revealing a secret, and then getting to a new place together. That was there in the movie, and, and that was the part that I enjoyed the, the most. I wish there would have been more of it. <laughs> but yeah. It was a, a great question by Samantha. What magic power would you like to have? Hmm. 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 Difficult. I feel like invisibility is pretty cool. Um, but you know, I, I feel like a lot of people would say invisibility for like the oh you can eavesdrop and you can spy on 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 things like. I think turning invisible is also great for being left alone. <laughs> that I think would be my favorite aspect of it. Um, I, I don't know. I also feel like I never could like with the classical heroes like super strength, like Superman was was never really something that that connected with me. Because you know you're strong, okay. Go save some people, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I guess they, especially nowadays, they, they actually go a lot into, like, you know, the burden of having a superpower and things like that. Um, Alright, here. For the camera zooming back, I think we actually, what we didn't do in the scribble, we're actually gonna do a zoom out. Now let's do it in a smart way, because if we just grab the camera now... Hmm... How does that work again? And, oh, there's a camera level. Hello, Find Out Studio. Nice to see you. We're just talking about Encanto. If anybody has more... Like, what is your opinion uh, on Encanto? What do you guys think about it have you seen it do you plan to see it um oh yeah and superpowers we're talking about what superpowers we would like to have 
as a real life superpower, I would love uh, I would love uh, photographic memory um, to just see something and then being able to draw it perfectly. Yeah, that would be that would be kind of cool. I actually do have a friend with photographic memory. She doesn't like it so much because you know you also keep things in, in mind that you wouldn't like to remember. Um, but yeah. So we wanted to move the camera. Okay, so let's zoom out here and um, and set some keyframes, I guess. But you know, if we just move the camera out like this, uh, or scale it. then we also move uh, we don't move our scribble layer which i think is pretty annoying so let's see if we can parent that <laughs> where is that view thing what is it called again i'm hopping around too much software schematic what they call it motion scenes okay so camera mm, camera when i move the camera i would also like to move those three layers so if i now move the camera let's test this yeah, also moving everything. Okay, but first we need to set a keyframe where everything is normal. Then we need to zoom out to make our kitty fit. In here. With some really cool special effects. What software are you using? Find out Studio, we are using OpenTunes, free and open source software. Quite powerful, really recommend it. I use it in a lot of my tutorials on this channel too. Um, Oh, Healy, that's really interesting. I always like time manipulation, teleport, teleportation, and super speed. Mostly for the same reason. Uh huh. That's pretty cool. Have you seen Kid Cosmic? Uh, with those those superpower stones. Um, they are doing some really cool stuff with like teleportation portals there. Really fun. Um, yeah, and time manipulation, I don't know, time stuff can get so complicated, but making time slower, for example, that would be quite nice. <laughs> how did you like it, Billy? How did you like it, Cosmic? Oh yeah, also good point, um, Billy says, I like uh, that Encanto's actual antagonist wasn't a villain. It was a good change of pace. Yeah, that was really interesting. To have a, a gaslighting grandma <laughs> as the, the antagonist. Um, that's something that we do not see too often in, in, in films. And that is a lot more complex than, you know, your classical villain with the manacle love and being maniacal love. That's what it's called. Um, like, just being evil for evil's sake. Yeah, the waitress has the portal ability. Loved Kid Cosmic soundtrack, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really iconic. 
I feel like all of um, Craig McCracken's um, uh, series have really nice uh, sound design and, so and, and music is really important and genres of music and different genres for different Uh, for different characters. <laughs> In a lesser Disney film, the grandma from Encanto would have mwahahahah and fell off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe there would have been actual fishy stuff with demons about the house and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I really like that. I really like that. And I feel like that's also something that a lot of people can connect with, you know? Your family's expectations. Um, that you feel like you can never... That you can never fulfill. Um, yeah, so that's... that's It's really nice to have more of that, like, more serious stuff. And if you think about it, it's relatively, like, it's a, a more invisible conflict, a smaller, like, not a smaller conflict, but, you know, more personal, more individual. And that is something that I would love to see more in mainstream animation. I mean, every now and then, don't get me wrong, like, a classic villain can be super fun. Um... All right, okay, so what's going on here? We wanna have... That pose. A bit more mature, yeah. I mean, I don't know even if that is it, because, you know, we, 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 we... We associate these deeper personal conflicts we associate them to be like a mature theme and you know like that's something it's a difficult film if it is about like a family conflict like that's a difficult film but if you think about it kids experience um they experience conflicts in the in the family um even if at an age where they might not be able to fully understand it, but, you know, kids are exposed to this kind of conflict. I'm surprised that there isn't more films about things like that. Um, and, you know, it could, could also be like, not to take this to a really dark place, but I think if, you know, a kid is in, like, an abusive family, it could actually be very healing to have a film it shows how a kid got out of an abusive family or got better or, you know, solved that conflict in some ways. Um, I don't know. I'm very pro more mature te uh, themes in, in, in animation. Yeah, exactly. They experience it, but it's hardly ever represented in kids. And you know, there are different ways to do it too. It could just be a side character who's going through some stuff. It doesn't have to be the main character. That's something that is too delicate. To do, I want to have this paw look really round, really soft and squishy. Ah, I feel like I'm kind of slow today. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, there's a tangent there. Here, I don't like. I don't like if lines intersect like this in one point. You know, we need to make the overlap clear here. Why not 
stretch the arm out fully. I think this is going to be a very fun little animation. for a different hand pose here to bring in some variation and you know the magic kind of intensifies so I want to I want to get into that too but ah, I don't know this just doesn't look right ah, I'm glad I'm glad that you're enjoy enjoying the process, Samantha. But yeah, we might get into timing only later, like in a later live stream. Uh, yeah, I, I like some crazy. I like me some crazy hand shapes. I have like some like. Arr! I really want him to like clutch his fingers. Caught up in the conversation, yeah. I mean, it's something that I'm starting to get used to, like, uh, talking and uh, just working at the same time. But, yeah, I mean, for the brain, it's it's still it's still multitasking. Um, to uh, draw something and live stream at the same time. And I also realize how my sentences kind of sometimes trail a little bit long when I'm like, and yeah, then we do this here, and that curve here, going around. <laughs> I'm sorry when I do that. <laughs> I try to avoid that, but sometimes I can't help it. Yeah, sit down, focus, and actually work on something that sometimes can be such an obstacle uh, to, to just start something. I had something today, I was doing something, uh, some work earlier today, um, where I was really like, ah, this is kind of like, it wasn't a very fun thing. So I was like, oh, I, I could listen to uh, some YouTube while I work. And I don't know, it made me so slow. Because somehow I got distracted, and then I got distracted with picking like the next video. <laughs> Whereas I, I think you know, and, and the the bad thing is always like, if you would just have worked focused for like two hours, you maybe could have just done an hour of YouTube afterwards. <laughs> but when you do it simultaneously, you work on it for hours and hours, but you're so much slower sometimes. I mean, there's some some work where I really think it's it's good to 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 do something on the side, like just coloring or something like that. Um, like that's a step where I'm like, oh, thank God I can listen to some podcasts or something like that. But sometimes I feel like I misjudge which work I can do um, by listening to something. Or while streaming. Ely says, I have that issue with VTubers. Yeah. Oh, I just... I, I, to my sh uh, shame, I have to confess, I just recently discovered Girl, Girl DM. And oh my god, her her puppet is so good. 
and her tracking. Um, I I just I just really like she is a very fun, awesome person. And on top of that, I'm just so impressed by the technology behind her channel and the model and the character design and the the. And her eye tracking is so good. Like if even if she just is thinking about something, she does those little eye darts that usually are lost in a lot of VTuber tracking equipment. And it's all there and it's so cool. To the point where I'm wondering, like, ah, maybe maybe like facial tracking could really be be the base for some some good character animation and, and stuff. You know, usually I'm not the biggest fan of like um, motion capturing and things like that, but you know, especially if it comes to like you're having a, a voice actor in a recording booth anyway, so why wouldn't you track their face? Why wouldn't you um, record that? And then you have something you can build on when you, when you do your own 3D animation. Yeah, Healy is also fascinated by the technology of VTubers. I really started to, to look into Girl DM's um, setup because she, she mentions what programs she uses and you can find that, but some of them are in Japanese, <laughs> so I'm out. And uh, her, her facial tracking, eye tracking uses an iPhone and I'm team Android, unfortunately. Yeah, and I, th uh, I think the reason why it has to be an iPhone is because of the depth sensor that they have. Motion capture is glorified rotoscoping, yeah. Still valuable. Yeah, I agree with both. Um, like, I, I don't think motion capturing is like the... I mean, for some industries is the holy grail, like for some games that can now do decent quality animation, a lot of decent quality animation uh, in much less time. It certainly, it certainly is a very big change. Um, but like, you know, there were like some prophecies that like in like in, in DreamWorks they use motion capturing extensively but only for reference and to build on it. And you know, there were some people who say like, oh in a couple of years motion capturing will replace everything. But you know, it, it never can do that because with a lot of animation like cartoon animation, you don't want reality, you want more than reality. So I think our jobs are safe. <laughs> ah, learning Japanese, Hilly, that's cool. Yeah. That sounds great. So <laughs> if you have learned if you have learned enough Japanese for what is it called? Look at Look at, look at, something like this, and you can start your VTubing career. <laughs> I really want to get into learning another language too, at some point, again. In school, I learned some, like, at school I actually learned Latin first, um, then English, French, and Spanish, and especially French and Spanish, I really forgotten. <laughs> I mean, if I hear some Spanish or something, or French... Well, I mean, hearing French is... is difficult to decipher, but, you know, some Spanish, I kinda, like, can, can kinda guess what's going on. But I really, I really need to, to get back into it. And, you know, with... These times, you don't even have traveling here in Europe, so... I don't know, but one day I'd like to reactivate that again. I was learning Japanese. 
I imagine that the grammar is a lot different from the European languages from English. God, machines aren't that advanced. What do you mean that they can do our work, do our animation for us? <laughs> I feel like though artificial intelligence will um, play more and more of a bigger role in artist jobs too. Um, I like, I that was before the pandemic and everything, but you know, uh, you find. Um, on this channel, you'll find some 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 interviews and stuff from the FMX, which is an animation and VFX conference in Germany. Um, and I, I I was really fascinated by this by the stuff that they presented there in terms of artificial intelligence and in in terms of the picture that they were painting there, um, because I think what what artificial intelligence could be really good at would be concept art. Wouldn't it be great if you could tell a machine to just say, okay, um, give me 20 trees in that style. Like I give you a reference frame and then generate different trees that look a little bit like this one, but you know, each a little bit different. Um, like generating a city or something like that. If you teach an algorithm how houses look and what different types of windows there are, then an artificial intelligence can build a city. Something that would take a human months to do if they would individually build every single house. Um, so, so I think in concept art, this could be a really useful tool. You still need an operator, and I think that's the reason why artificial intelligence will take a long time to really completely um, uh, take over jobs, because you always need an operator. You need a human eye to tell the artificial intelligence, intelligence if it's doing good or not. But I think if you have that, um, be a very interesting time. Japanese grammar and sentence structure are very different. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. I find it so, like, um, I learned Latin, so in Latin there are some, uh, like the, the, the way how you conjugate verbs there are cases that do not exist in German or English. Oh yeah, I'm a German speaker, so I also know German. Um, but there, there, there are some cases that just don't exist in any of the other languages. And that is very, I feel like, you know, to learn that, to be like, yeah, if, um, if the person talks about you, but you are multiple with multiple people, then in this case, that you don't really have a feeling for it, then you need to use this conjugation. Um, and that's just so... I mean, I find it, find it really interesting how stuff like that happens. Um, what is actually happening in this frame? Oh, we're just holding this? Okay. We're just holding this. I think we have our most important frames then. We have this one. We have uh, this one, where all the magic happens. Alright. Oh no, the, the, these ones. This one is the actual... This one is the actual frame, okay!
But I think one thing that I would like to learn before even getting into more languages is to learn a little bit more about programming. Um, I'm kind of sliding into this more and more because I occasionally do web design. Um, if there are not enough animation jobs to go around. I'm actually having a part-time job now. Um, I do front-end uh, in HTML and CSS. And you know, HTML and CSS is really um, not really a programming language, it's a markup language, but uh, I, I really like the touches that we have with the developers there. And when they are creating new features and they ask us designers how to um, to make this stuff, I, I frequently wish like, oh, I just wish I could create my own applications. I wish I could just do my own programming to, you know, for example, like I'm, I'm a freak for to do and project management software because no to do and project management software is exactly how I want it, is exactly right. Um, that's a weak pose. I really don't like that pose. What are we gonna do about this? I'm gonna put some sass into it by having his arm up here. Hmm. Didn't we have like, what is the beginning cause? Oh, with his arm behind his back. I feel like our little wizard dude lost some sass here. We need to bring back the sass. And at the same time, I don't want to make the pose too complicated. This is kind of like his long, um, his long sleeves are kind of becoming a problem there. No, that does not look right. That just looks like he has a growth on his side. Yeah, YouTube comments are slow to pop up. I know, I know, there's a, a little bit of a delay here. I gotta have to tweak that again. Um, I think at the moment I'm streaming with like uh, a, a bit of a buffer for um, you know, so that the stream is is not interrupted because in my in my old house, um, the stream was sometimes lost, and I I made my settings here a little bit more secure, so that the stream would just not be interrupted and stuff like that. Okay, I have to give that up with the the arm. What else could he be doing? Okay, so. This hand makes a lot of sense because, you know, he's like continuing the spell, continuing to to influence the milk container. Maybe his other hand could be more like... Yeah, I like that more. I like that a lot more than the symmetric. And the symmetry there. Hello, Infinite Imagination. Nice to see you. Ah, Samantha is recommending Python as a programming language. Really friendly and easy to learn, and not problematic. I touched a little bit into uh, um, into Python with uh, Blender, actually. A lot of the scripts and uh, like. Plugins for Blender are written in Python, so back in the days where I was experimenting more with Blender, I even like sometimes went into some plugins and without really knowing much about Python, <laughs> found like things in the code or tweaked things in the code or like changed a number here and there. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. And it would be kind of cool to, you know, be able to write your own scripts in Blender. To make really complicated rigging things, maybe. Sounds good. Have you guys heard about something called uh, Ruby? Specifically Ruby on Rails? Um, that was the one that I have been researching a lot. It won't help me for, like, 3D and Blender and Python and stuff like that. But I heard that it's really easy to make, like, simple interfaces in there. Um, like, if you want to build, like, your own lock or your own to-do app or something, that's apparently something that you can do really quickly in Ruby on Rails. Um... Yeah, that's the thing that I kind of hope for. Like, uh, um, most program programming languages use the same principles, loops, etc. It's just the syntax that changes, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's... I feel like, you know, that's also true about animation. Like, people are always worried, like, ah, oh, what if I learn that, uh, that software and then I find a better software? Where I'm like, then that's great. Then you already know everything that you need to look for. Uh, you already know, um, you know, what buttons you need to look for and you might have to do some relearning to do on how to do things in a different software. Yeah, but at least you know what you have to look for, what you have to learn. So yeah, in a way, I think the most important thing is probably just starting starting with something and then you can always change direction later See how that pose looks compared to the other ones. Let's switch off some layers. Let's switch off. And flip back and forth. Something that I was doing actually far too little here. Yeah, I think that is reasonably consistent with the head. He says, I like playing with Pluto 8. It's a little self contained game engine. It uses Lua as the language. Great for making little prototypes. That sounds really interesting. I really like those tools that help you to create like a working something really quickly. That sounds interesting. I feel like that's also very good for motivation if you get something that like kind of works in the direction that you wanted to, to check out that you wanted to explore really quickly and I feel like that's something that can really help to get like the momentum of a project going uh, whereas you know if you have a, a new game engine and your first step is okay I just need to I don't know worry about the basics i need like uh too much to like just make the character move or walk or something and you know that can really be demotivating Change the angle here a bit of the. Uh, oh, I feel like we're lagging here sometimes a bit. Is the sound lagging? What is the CPU saying? The CPU says 18%, 12%. Shouldn't be lagging. I feel like sometimes the lines are slow and just catching up to me.
you know, and of course another dimension to knowing how to program is if you could, if you could work on an open source project, like for example, if you'd be missing a feature in open tunes, it's an open source project. You could just add it. You could try to, to, you know, contribute to the project product and add in that feature that you're missing for everybody to enjoy really like that open source uh, philosophy and and kind of wish I could contribute more <laughs> to some projects I can only contribute right now with finding bugs <laughs> and I have uh, with open dudes Virtual console makes really retro looking games. Eco eight. That's really cool. Yeah, I love me love me some some retro games, some pixel graphic, pixel animation also super interesting. There's another thing called processing. It's similar to Java and geared towards artists. What? Geared towards artists? That sounds super interesting. I'm gonna write that down. Processing. If you're looking for an open source engine, there's Godot engine. I actually I feel like I've heard about this before. I think I looked look into that. Yeah, it's a node engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw. Interesting. Uh, so where's the band of operations here? Oh, come on. Let's make this one line all smooth and nice. I think my PC is lagging today. What is going on? I just want to leave this little protruding line here. I like little little human errors in images occasionally. So that make the animation very lively. Now, oh, did we get all important drawings? I think we did. I hope we did. I just still love this first pose. I love this. Like, there's so much character in this. Like, I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm an all-powerful wizard doing an all-powerful thing. Look at me. Beautiful. Um, okay, so what's going on? Yes. Oh, we're zooming out. Um, and there's the milk. <laughs> now let's add some uh, breakdowns. Actually, should we do extremes? Where does it go? Ah, not much time left. Unfortunately, I have to go soon. So if there are any more questions about things, I would uh, I could answer some last minute questions. 
Let's make a couple breakdowns as far as we get in the little time that we left. Um, okay, so breakdown. Um, I feel like the head is pretty straightforward because it's just going to be in the middle. Now, where we can have fun is... Yes, there's still, there's still... I was like, there's one more image. <laughs> there's one image too much here that we don't want to have a look at. Here, this at frame 30 was switched on. <laughs> I was like, where is that hand position coming from? Okay, that makes more sense. You go from here to there. Um, so... The head is kind of straightforward. We're just gonna paint in the middle, you know, breakdowns in the middle of the motion. But sometimes I, I love the breakdowns that are not exactly in the middle, and we're gonna get to that in a second. We should also do some cool stuff that is not just exactly in the middle. Hey, hey, hey. Um, really, those are not my best strokes today here. Not the best brush strokes I've ever done. Hopefully, hopefully nobody watches too closely. <laughs> and I think during the breakdown, the eyes are already closed. At least like this. And then they get more into his, uh, the round shape later. My line quality is really horrible today. <laughs> really squiggly. Ah, there's a question from Eclats. How do I keep my work the same um a new youtube subscriber uh welcome silver mare uh how do i keep my work the same um do you mean like the volume of like the character model how you keep your character model the same um the key to that if you're really talking about that topic the key to that is a model sheet um, that you have your uh, character drawn from a couple of angles and you're always using that as a reference. Um, that's gonna help a lot. Um, if I have model sheets now for this character, <laughs> unfortunately I do not have a model sheet, but if I had one I would put that on a, um, on a layer under everything and just switch that on and off whenever I need it. Um, and I'm kind of using, in this case, like I feel like this is my reference layer that I take like for the height of the nose. I mean, I might have, yeah, I changed that a couple bit uh, in a couple frames. Like his snout should actually be a bit higher and stuff like that. You know, for a quick, fun animation like this, I would take one of the frames and say like, okay, this is my model sheet, and then check all the volumes and sizes towards that frame, if your character looks like that frame. And one thing that I occasionally also do is like, I sometimes copy like the ear to be like, okay, I want to make sure that the ear keeps the volume. So I would go in and let's say here, copy that in, and this way, I can tweak this and make sure... Oh, I scaled it and didn't mean to do that. Um, this way I can make sure that I'm keeping the volume. Now, if you do that too often, it will make your animation very stiff and puppet style-like, like cutout -like, style-like. That's sometimes not what you are... what you might want. Maybe we should already go to like the closed eyes. Give it a bit more of a punch when the eyes close immediately to that U shape. 
little further up maybe see how that looks you know and flipping like this i feel like really helps because you see if stuff is shrinking and growing um i kind of like how the hat is getting a little wider and we're kind of claiming like the hat the hat is wider than it is like when you see it from the front when you see it from the front it's only like that width and when you see it the more you see it from the side the wider it gets kind of like that little detail but we would have to keep that consistent you know and that's why you need a model sheet with multiple angles go in for some extra arcness yeah I like that okay so now let's see if we can do something more complex than just drawing stuff exactly in the middle here especially for the arm Now, let's try something for the arm. Instead of having it like, if we would do it like this, it would be, and we can see how that feels. Um, like this would be like a everyday kind of in between um, breakdown. But let's see if we can have some fun with that. Because um, actually it's gonna have that curve, that curvature like this later on. So why don't we go in and reverse the curve or the breakdown, see what happens, see how that feels. Um, like this, have it really coming, like pointing in the direction that it was coming from. Let's also paint in the rest of the body real quick. gonna be a bit wobbly but you know what was I saying we want to have fun with this animation so some wobbliness is to be excused well, let's see how that looks okay we need some in-betweens, but I, I do feel like this is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun one. Maybe let's keep the spirit of it and do it a little higher up here. We could also think about how it would be to look into her. I do want to avoid that though in a in a breakdown to look into her sleeves and then not look into her sleeves in the pose. Um, it's something that I wouldn't like to do because then you had just like a flash during one frame. Okay. I think we can leave it like this. It's not doing the wow effect that I hoped it would do. Um, you know, sometimes if you do crazy stuff doing the breakdown, it really transcends your work. It really gives it this extra dimension of something fun and crazy going on. Let's delete some points to make this a bit more smooth. This is okay, but all right. But what we're definitely going to have is here an overshoot, even if it's just for the arm. 
And let's see how far we can get with this just by being lazy. Let's copy that frame, paste it on the previous one. Um, oh, give me a new frame, please, here. Yeah. Oh. And then just do the sleeves. And let's claim that the material is kind of heavy, so it stays on here. Stays on here, here. Yeah. This is totally needed. Um, very important frame. Oop, that was a bit too quick. Oop. Okay. All right. So I think that's it for today. No timing yet. I'm doing this all by just flipping through the key poses. But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Switch on the scribble layer again so we can see it all. With that, uh, I hope you had a fun time. I know I did really loved talking to people in the chat today. Uh, really appreciate everyone who's, uh, who's here, even if you're just saying hi. Always really appreciate it, and I love chatting with all of you tonight. Um, yeah, once again, I have to say, I have to say, we have a Patreon that you can check out, and um, you know the usual Patreon stuff, you can give a small amount and occasionally there will be secret content just for you, but it just helps me so much even if you support me just with a couple of dollars to make more tutorials, more frequent live streams, uh, it's really appreciated. And then of course we also have the group mentoring, which is a tier of the Patreon's uh, um, 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 memberships. Like, if you get the group mentoring tier, you can come to a mentoring session every single month. Every single month, you can bring whatever you're currently working on or, you know, a problem that you have, a big question that you ponder about art and animation, and you will get feedback. Um, a professional mentor like me will critique your work. We're gonna draw over it and give you tips and tricks on how to improve it. Um, so yeah, that's the group mentoring, um, and if you want to support, if you want to join the group mentoring, or if you just want to support me, please check out um, our Patreon on Patreon.com/AnimatorIsland. Um, yeah, once again, everyone, thank you so very much for watching. I had a lot of fun today, and we need to do it again. And I hope to be more frequent about live streams soon. And I definitely want to get this animation done. I think this is this is gonna be a fun little animation here. With our look at him, look at him, look at our little wizard. Look at him, L look him in the eyes. The secrets you've seen of the universe of magic. Look at him. We have to animate this fellow. We have to. <laughs> um, yeah. I hope you have a great day, night, wherever you are. Enjoy your time if you can. Um, and. Keep on animating cool stuff. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.